Hey, good afternoon everyone. This is Jason Fisher, your host today for 15 Minutes in the Forest. I'm going to do a short section today on tree volume, how to measure the volume of a tree, why that's important, and a little bit on merchandising. Uh, recently, my wife and I have done a harvest on our property right here in Halifax County, and so I've been taking some documentation, some pictures and video of that process. Uh, well, maybe we'll share that in a, a segment in the future on logging. But today we'll look at how to measure volumes of trees, uh, what you're looking at when they're still standing, like this large red oak behind me, before they're cut and severed off the stump. Some tools that we use, some basic tools. There's some really high-tech tools out there that I won't be showing you, but we'll show you a picture of them. And then once the trees are felled and they're on the ground, how then are they measured and looked at at a closer inspection at the mill, at the, lo at the log yard where the, the logs are brought in? And where do they go from there? So the merchandising piece is really uh, like anything else you would do if you're shopping for a vehicle or looking to purchase a home, you're going to look at a number of them and find the ones that you want. Well, timber buyers are looking for a certain species of log or tree, and there's the lengths that they want, there's diameters that they want, uh, and we're going to talk about why that's important. So it's one of those things where you need to measure twice and cut once. Uh, my grandfather always taught me that, and I found out the hard way why that's important. And so uh, today's segment, we'll talk a little bit about tree volume and merchandising. Thanks for joining us. All right, here we go. We're going to do height, but I'm double checking my diameter here. See what we got. Got a 20, 24 and some change tree. We're going to say 24 inches, about like the, the tree we just measured. And I'll move around carefully. Got a barbed wire fence here. And we'll check this, this side here. About 25 inches. And then on the downhill side, 27. Oh boy. So we average those three almost 25 inches. And so you have to learn your pacing or just know how to pace and step off distance. So um, I'll demonstrate that. Talking about pacing, you can get a 100 foot tape and just stretch that out on a field on a flat area. And a pace is going to be essentially every other step. For me, 66 feet is 14 paces or 28 steps. Maybe easier for this video just to say keep up with your steps. Uh, so 28 steps away, and you want to walk on the same contour if you can. And if you look behind me, there's a kind of low area, kind of streams, that's downhill. And then obviously we're hitting up the hill here, so we're gonna go perpendicular to that and walk a pace off. So I'll pace off and be right back and we'll measure our tree. You can see this pine is pretty good size. Looking up it, very nice specimen. Way up. We're going to get some good height on this one to get a, a, a big volume. I'm shooting for something here, and I'll show you what I'm up to in a minute. Okay, I doubt you can read that, but it says stand 66 feet from the tree, plumb the stick, holding it 25 inches from your eye, and line up at stump height and read the marshmallow tree height in feet. So we have a scale here, 20 feet, 25 feet, 30 goes all the way up to 80 okay that's one side we're gonna be looking at logs in this case you'll see the number one and follow the stick on up two logs one log being 16 feet okay a bolt would be eight feet okay so maybe you can see from where you're at there Trying to solo this is challenging, but we'll get through it. So I'm standing 66 feet away. See that in the bottom, there's those two trees again. And so I'm gonna hold my Biltmore stick 
not back, not front, but level, just like the tree is, straight up and down. I'm placing the bottom of my stick essentially as if there were a clipboard at the base of the tree. So stump height, but a clipboard, I could try to envision that. Hold it there again without moving your head. I'm looking up with my eyes. I'm going all the way up to that little bunch of leaves I showed you earlier. And amazingly, I've got exactly five logs to that point. So five logs, do the math, 16 times five. Here's the neat thing since we're talking about volume. Since the diameter of the tree in inches, we had about 25 inches. And I know this is a tough on the eyes. Anyhow, 25 inches in diameter with three, five 16 foot logs is 930 board feet. Okay, so that was close. I thought I'd pick the perfect tree to get a thousand board feet up. Uh, but we're close. Uh, and the reason I mention that is one board foot is 12 inches by 12 inches, one inch thick. And so when you look at um, buyer sheets and they're showing you that they're paying so much per thousand board feet, they'll use MBF. Then that can give you an idea and you can do the math based on the size of your tree. So in this case, I measured that tree at 25 inches diameter breast height. Again, first we get our diameter, and then we determine that merchantable height going up to that first defect or that height, uh, that diameter minimum, if you can begin to envision that. So I'm trying to cross the line here between uh, what a landowner would do and, and essentially what a forester would do, but foresters have the eye, uh, the professionals that are out there working, the consultants, the buyers, uh, they can walk through a stretch of woods, and some of them, quite frankly, never put a piece of tape, clinometer, anything on a tree just about and can walk away from there and have a very close estimate and that's all it is is an estimate of what that track of timber is worth. Uh, fact is a higher professional gets someone to appraise and cruise your timber, know your volumes. Another method of volume used with logs is tonnage. So the weight in tons of logs is often used to keep from scaling. It saves time and works best with smaller, lower value products like pulpwood and chips. Speaking of pulpwood, you can also come up with pulpwood volumes in tons from this table. There are a number of log scales used across the country. These include the International Quarter Inch, the Doyle and the Scribner and Scribner C, to name a few. You will use the scale that the mill is using and won't necessarily have a choice in what that is, but you need to understand that there are different scales out there. We won't go into that as far as this video, but here is a table of the International Quarter Inch rule showing the DBH on the left and the number of 16 foot logs across the top, and you can see the board foot volume. Okay, so if you see the, the tree that's down in the bottom, just where my fingers are pointing right there, I'm going to try to pan up and show you. I just went down and measured that tree with the diameter tape. If you look up, up where my hat brim is, right where my fingers point, you see that big fork? Okay, that is what we would call an example of a defect. Okay, so you would sever that tree right there. I'm standing a chain away, 66 feet. So I'm going to get my Biltmore stick out and take a measurement and see where it is to that defect on that tree. And real quickly, because time is money, I've got two and a half logs just, just below that, that fork. Okay, so you'd usually look at a, at this point, go to a volume table. We're going to use the one on the tree scale stick. So two and a half logs, it says two 16 foot logs, and we follow that out to 23 inches. We got 404 board feet for two logs. So if one log is 231, then a half log is about 115, okay? So about 519, you're roughly 500 board feet. About half it was in that big pine we just saw. But still, that at least gives you an idea 
of the volume that's in that tree for our second example. Merchandising logs begins with getting an inventory of your timber and marking your trees accordingly. Defects like this ring shake can be seen once the log is brought to the deck. This could not be seen, however, while the tree was in the woods. This will need to be cut off before the log heads to the mill. Merchandising continues in the woods with the cutter removing the trees and laying the trees in appropriate piles. The skidder then brings the trees to the deck area where the trees are laid in a pile. The loader, another piece of equipment at the deck, is a very important piece when merchandising logs. The logs are then sorted by species and product. The next area we'll talk about are some of the products that get merchandised on a typical logging job. It begins with the smaller material that has the least value, and this is typically the tree tops and small diameter material less than three inches. This usually goes into a chipper if the logger has a chipper on their job and goes into a van and then is taken to a mill. We'll continue now with the different value going from lowest to highest, beginning with pulp wood, then chip and saw or pallet wood, and then saw timber. Also, Sometimes there might be specialty products on the site, such as Eastern Red Cedar, for example, where this landowner wished to make additional products out of. Merchandising continues at the deck where prospective buyers come and look at the logs to determine if they meet the qualifications for the mill. So we go back again to the loader where the loader operator continues merchandising the logs. The logs are placed onto the trailer and secured before it heads down the road. Also, there will be a label specific to each load placed on the load in order to track it to the mill. Then the logs are moved from the pile and spread out on the ground for the greater to take a look at the logs for defects, quality, and length. The logs are painted typically for identification as well. And if it is export material, you can see the barcode on this log that was used as an identifier. Well, that wraps up tree volume. Sitting here on a beautiful stream. If you want to learn more about how clean is your stream? Join us next week for that topic on 15 Minutes in the Forest with my colleague Jennifer Gagnon. Thanks for joining us.